Hello everybody and welcome back. Apparently not a whole lot of you like the drone video because uh, I didn't do crap for views. But, I like showing off my stuff and I like to play with my toys because I'm a child that's 43 years old. But, we got something cool for the Dodge. I know some of you guys are going to hate on this, but I don't care because what I bought has been R&D'd to the hill and back if that's even a saying and it uh you know I'm a little bit older a little bit more conservative so I didn't want my truck to be loud and obnoxious and everything else so we went ahead and got a Banks 4 inch monster exhaust and now before you guys start screaming and yelling that I should have went 5 inch straight pipe and all this other crap you can make a thousand horsepower through a four inch exhaust without an issue. This has a muffler, so it'll be nice and quiet. So when I decide to drive it for more than 20 minutes, I'm not going to have a headache and want to drive myself into a tree. And I'm also not going to wake my neighbors up at 2 a.m. when I come home late from work. So all in all, Banks, hands down, if you're looking for reliability, for power, for no giant black clouds of smoke, and you just want to be a kind human being, these are the way to go. So we're going to pull the truck in and get to installing this sucker. Okay, so we're gonna give you guys the before clip, which is a little difficult because there's no tailpipe. It's all right there. But here's what it sounds like now. Now, we get it up in the air and get rid of that stock muffler. Alrighty, so in typical fashion, this exhaust at some point, the tailpipe rotted out, which is very common with these Dodges. The tailpipe rots out and they're just junk metal. But everything in the front is usually much better, which you can see, although it's got some surface rust on it, it's still pretty decent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull from here back. So basically we're just gonna take this stupid muffler off of here. The system we got is cat back. And the reason why I got cat back is because in Connecticut, they are really starting to crack down on the diesel emissions laws. And I don't want to have any issues when I have to take this thing through emissions for the first time um, because I just don't want to deal with it. I really don't want to have the hassle of having to put a cat back on it after I cut one off of it, blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do, the, the factory stuff is all four inch. This cat doesn't really restrict too, too bad, especially at a stock power level. So we're going to go ahead and basically just take it off, take it apart here, which judging by these bolts, I'm going to need the torch for. And then we're going to pull this muffler off and we'll get the bank system on it. And there you have it with some eloquently placed curse words and an angle grinder. We got it off of there. 
So now, let's hope that they didn't chop this pipe any shorter than it needs to be so that we can put our catback kit on here and utilize all of our actual factory hangers, which we're missing the rubber for that one. But we do have the rear one, this one, and this one, so we'll just have to buy that one, but no big deal. That's the least of our problems right now. So let's go ahead and get the, uh, the banks unpacked and I'll show you guys what came in the kit. Alrighty, let's dig into this box. One of the other reasons I went with Banks too is because everything is stainless. Now a lot of the systems that are inexpensive end up being, you know, aluminized steel or whatever and that aluminized stuff just doesn't last around here. Ooh, stickers, good for 10 horsepower. We got our hangers. We got clamps. We got our tailpipe. Over the axle. Our adapter for the cat. Another clamp. part all of you love to hate, the muffler. <laughs> so having a muffler is key, because then you stay under the radar. Good lord. That's a big muffler. And then, the tailpipe tip. Now, Here's a problem with me. Let me get you guys up in the air here so you're not staring at my crotch. So the problem that I have is that I'm impatient. And my supplier only had chrome. And I am not a huge fan of chrome. So this nice shiny thing that says banks on it we're probably going to uh, scratch that up and paint it black because everything else on the truck is black. It's going to look goofy with a giant shiny tip hanging out the end of it. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. But that is the entire kit. I'm sure you can see that or can't see that. There you go. That is the whole kit, which actually looks a lot bigger than four inch. So. We're going to have to take some measurements. All right, so we're going to start installing this thing, and it's pretty straightforward. The adapter is going to go on here. Then we have a hanger that's going to go here, the muffler here, and then the rest of the piping. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a trick when it comes to this stuff. All right, so there's the adapter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start putting our hangers in before we even hang anything. Because ultimately what we're wanting to do here is make our lives easy. And so if we get these hangers in place beforehand, then we can slide everything we need to slide into place without really having to worry about much. So now we can slide the muffler on and we'll already have a hanger in place. Because we have that hanger in place, we're going to go ahead and put this back hanger in place also up here that's sort of missing this one, but we'll put it up there with like zip ties or something for now, and then we'll get the correct one later. But we're going to put those in and then we'll slide the muffler in. Alrighty, so in a pinch, I don't know, you guys can't really see all that well, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping, praying. You can use a hose clamp 
to kind of double as a uh, exhaust hanger when you don't have one. But now what this is going to allow us to do is slide the muffler up onto this pipe and then ultimately we'll be able to just hang the muffler there without having to hold it while somebody else tightens clamps. Uh, we'll stick this beast of a muffler up here. And then we'll come in and slide it on our pipe. <laughs> Funny. Making sure that our logo is where it should be. All right, so we're good there. And now, one thing to always remember is leave all of the clamps loose. Everything is going to stay completely loose so that we can install the rest of this exhaust system easily and move things around if we need to. All right, so that is our up and over the axle pipe. And now we're going to grab, basically, if we can get our light to stay where we want to put it, because it's going to make me mad, we will get, this is horrible, we'll get our tailpipe next, I promise. Now this one, excuse my hand, will go here, and then we're going to need to lift it up into that hanger, which is going to be fun to do. Very fun to do. So we'll back you up a little bit. How about we lubricate things a little bit before all that falls out? Catch it if it falls. Try this again. Round two. They make a special tool for those guys. Oh, all right, hold on, we'll be right back. All right, I don't know if I said it, but they gotta cut you guys off because the demonetized monsters would have been after me big time. But we got everything in, we got all the hangers in place, finally. So now what we need to do is we need to position all of our exhaust components. We want to make sure we're not hitting the spring. We want to make sure we're not hitting the spare tire. We want to make sure we're not hitting the body anywhere, that all our hangers are good. And most importantly, that our exhaust tip is going to be in the spot that we want it in. So we're going to rotate this ever so slightly until we get the outcome we're looking for. And truthfully, I don't like how close this is to the wheel, so luckily I have a little bit of room. To kind of slide it back. Alright, so we're getting close to the spare tire now, and if we rotate, we're getting a little close to the spring, so we're going to probably 
aim it right there because our spring is actually going to drop with the weight of the vehicle on it. So we're about, I don't know, if you guys can see it, we're about a half inch or so from the spring itself up here. So I think I like that right there. So now we're going to start tightening all the, uh, all the clamps up one by one. All right, and another word of advice. When you're installing a pre-built system, the pre-built system is always not going to fit as you expected it to. So start tightening your clamps from the front and work your way back. So if anything moves, you still have that room in the rear to actually move what you need to. And now to our other hanger, get that position where we want it. We're gonna rotate that just a bit. There's that one. Now we're just gonna check to make sure that everything is where it needs to be still. So we're going to knock out this hang, this clamp. Now we're going to move to the back. Sorry about that blindingness. Move to the back. We're going to make sure again that our tubing is where we want it. And that our this tube is up where it needs to be. And we'll tighten this one. I do believe we are done. So I'm going to take you off the tripod. And we'll go back and we'll look at everything. Like I said, we're not putting the tip on yet because I want to paint that sucker black. Or I may even just leave this pipe just like it is. And uh, just kind of shoot it black or let it naturally do what it's going to do. Uh, mostly because I just don't like the big fancy, you know, I don't know. I'm not that guy. I like it to look kind of raw, kind of work trucky. But I don't know. I guess we'll see. Okay, so... We are pretty much done. We got our hangers in, got our clamps all clamped on. We're good to go. Everything is nice and tight. The exhaust doesn't move and we're solid. Now, one of the things that I wanted to bring to your guys' attention, this exhaust system is T409 stainless steel. Watch this. So for all your life, you've been told that magnets don't stick to stainless steel. Well, in some ways that's true t304 your magnet will not stick to it unless you have a really really strong magnet and then it will ultimately stick to it t409 however has very high iron content and being that it has a very high iron content a magnet will stick to it now t409 is not necessarily the best stainless steel it will corrode slightly and it'll end up probably looking Ah, maybe similar to that over time, but that'll take a few years But it won't rot and it won't eat through which is the main concern now You guys are probably asking yourselves why in the world you as a fabricator who makes custom exhaust systems Would you buy an exhaust versus building one? Well, it's very simple. I Can't buy t409 stainless at least I haven't searched hard enough to find it T409 stainless is less than half the cost of T304. So this entire exhaust system is like under 400 bucks. Retail, I think it retails for 450. So for 450 bucks, you get this entire muffler, a full four inch system, all your clamps, all your hangers, 
everything's pre-bent, mandrel bent, and you get a chrome tip. In order for me to build this exact system from here all the way to there at a T304 four inch, it would cost me about $800 just in material between the clamps, the hangers, the tubing, the muffler. It's about 800 bucks in material. So when it comes to custom exhaust stuff, guys, buying an exhaust that's pre-made out of a lesser material is always going to be cheaper than having one custom made out of top end materials, just the way it works. So for this particular build, I decided, you know what? Let me show you guys what's available off the shelf. There's no extravagance. There's no, you know, what do they call it? Exotic materials used. It's nothing. You can buy this off the shelf for like 400, 450 bucks. And you'll have yourself a nice four inch system. The five inch system is just a little bit more money, but it's not too terrible. So just kind of wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. And again, we did the cat back because Connecticut, so we are now going to put this puppy back on the ground and see what this exhaust system sounds like after we tighten up our hose clamp right there. But we'll get it. The moment, and now for the moment you've all been waiting for, yeah, I put the tip on. It doesn't look bad with the chrome bumper, chrome tip. We'll rock it for now. If I get tired of it, we'll paint it black kind of not digging how it hangs down like that so we might have to modify some stuff to kind of twist this up and maybe back out a little bit but you know what it is what it is it's an exhaust kit you get what you get so let's at least fire this thing up and see how it sounds Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I think that sounds pretty darn good. And the reason I think it sounds pretty darn good is because I can't really hear it. Um, I'll have to look at the before and after footage to see truthfully what it's gonna be like, but I can already tell it's not gonna have the loud drone because if you've ever been in a Cummins diesel pickup at about 16, 1700 RPM with a five inch straight pipe, you wanna blow your brains out. So please don't do that. Put a muffler on your truck. It'll save lives. But, anywho, I think it sounds good. You guys might not agree, but at the same point in time, we are going for conservative, and I do want to daily drive this truck, and I don't want it to be annoying. It's the worst thing ever is to have a vehicle that sounds and makes you just crazy every time you drive it, and I know some of you can relate to that. But, install-wise, super easy. On a cussing scale, of 1 to 10, it was about a 3, and that was just getting the old exhaust off. Putting the new stuff on wasn't too bad, except for that rear hanger, which again involves old stuff. So, yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10, cuss word-wise, it's probably a 3. I had to shut you guys off once or twice, so we didn't, uh, we didn't offend anybody. But that's pretty much it when it comes to installing ex an exhaust. And truthfully, I probably could have done this on the ground just as quickly as I did it in the air. I just don't like rolling around on the ground anymore. I was working on a big international DT-466 earlier today and I obviously can't lift that up in the air so I had to do an oil change and everything else on the ground. I'm not doing crap on the ground anymore, I have a lift. But you could do it on the ground, no problem. Probably take you an hour max to get the old stuff off, put the new stuff on, and you're golden, you got an exhaust system. So, all right, that's it for the Banks Monster Exhaust. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We got another video coming up soon. Let me show you what we, we're doing something. So we got a little goodie from these guys. Fleece. 
We ordered it, we paid for it, but we got it. This is gonna be going under the hood somewhere. And then we have another something that was sent to us by a very amazing company that is going right about where the hole in the side of the bed goes, somewhere in that general area. So you'll get to see that next, but I need a little bit more time because it's already, it's already 12.30 at night. And this is the only time I really ever get to work on my stuff. So we're gonna have to save the other thing for another time, which will probably be in a week or so. But we'll get it done. I know you guys will like it. And uh, yeah, then we can hope and pray that our license plates will get here soon because last week we dropped off all the paperwork to the DMV. The DMVs in Connecticut are all closed except three of them at each corner of the state and I happen to be right in the middle of the state. Fun. I dropped off the paperwork. They're saying it's taken three to four weeks to actually process and get license plates out. So I might still have another two or three weeks to wait which sucks because I want to drive this truck. I'm doing all this work to it and I can't even drive it because it's not registered. So hopefully that'll come through. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying the, the series. I got to put all these videos in a playlist of the Ram 2500. Kind of a fun little truck. Um, yeah, so we will obviously see you on the next one. And uh, have a good night, everybody.